Bueno, compañeras, eh, bueno, me toca dar la bienvenida, después por supuesto... Ok, comrades, so it is my task today to make the introduction. Each of you will have um, time to be able to intervene from your um, ISO movements. So first of all, I would like to welcome all of you, so many uh, leaders and militants of the world. It is a great joy for all of us. We are proud from the ISL to be able to make this um, conference with participation of all continents and through the different interventions, we are going to get to know many uh, particular issues of each country, but also we will um, highlight that our claims, our, our struggle um, knows no frontiers knows no limit. Our struggle is the same. It is against the system, the father of all the violences that we suffer, and it is the common struggle for equality and socialism. So first of all, I would like to um, speak specifically about the solidarity and, and, to, and our solidarity to be able to reach our comrades from Ukraine. Uh, there are many comrades from Ukraine in the chat and in this meeting, those comrades who are under attack, those who have to flee from their country, there is no bigger um, horror that one that was that of the world. And um, we want to express our solidarity with your people, which is being attacked by Russian imperialism. There is not only one imperialism in this world, not only um, American imperialism, but also I would like to um, take advantage of this moment to alert uh, the whole working class from Ukraine that you cannot trust um, American imperialism. Um, here in our region, we suffer their actions uh, permanently against our peoples. So we think that it is necessary in this um, conference out with Putin's uh, troops, out with um, Russian imperialism, out with NATO, out with the UK of um, Eastern Europe, and to keep on working and maintain this commitment and making different actions in all the countries we are in to curb this imperialist uh, intervention and this um, battle between imperialist countries in which we have nothing um, to win. So I wanted to express the greatest solidarity. And I would also like to take a few minutes to denounce the capitalist dictatorship of Ortega Murillo in Nicaragua and today there are more than 170 comrades who are political um, detainees and prisoners. So we want to make a huge international campaign to denounce the violation of human rights and especially to demand freedom for all of those women and sexually diverse comrades who are detained and prisoners we don't know exactly how much, how many of them there are, but we know that there is sexual violence in many cases. So um, different countries of each region will then uh, specify about these um, cases, but I didn't want to uh, not take advantage of the situation to denounce the dictatorship in Nicaragua. So first of all, I would like to speak a little bit about the situation in our country the massivity of the struggles of the women's movement here in Argentina, we can say that there was a peak in 2015 with new namenos, with sanitites, and there was a process in the heat of a, a new moment, a new wave of the struggles of uh, the women's movement. And that resulted in, well, one year ago, a little bit more than a year, we conquered the right for uh, legal abortion with the green waves, with our green scarves, handkerchiefs, 
and that has um, overcome frontiers with millions, we were able to win that struggle against the church, against uh, traditional politicians, against um, extreme right-wing sectors. And we actively uh, participated. There, We have many, many new comrades from this process that have are, are now convinced of the struggle for revolutionary socialism. And there has been a whole new process and a whole new wave which we have taken the streets and women are the ones who have led different struggle in different sectors, working sectors, neighborhoods, and uh, the youth as we saw it. And um, they are in the first line for their fight to our um, women's rights, but not all, not only that, but also workers' rights. And that's where our intervention is concentrated. So in these uh, last two years, uh, the pandemic has um, affected this process. It curved this process uh, not to mobilize. And it is uh, because of this intervention in which women have taken one leap forward for our demands and role and class role, for our role in different places. We are in the first line and we saw it in the pandemic and they are comrades here from the health sector, nurses. They were leading the fight against COVID, but also the fight for our rights. So we think that it, this, is, this is very important. We denounce different governments that do not ensure us the most basic rights. So we are going to keep on fighting and we think that this situation is a result of that previous process. Uh, workers from the education sectors, those are the sectors of the most feminized sectors, uh, lower wages. So it is really a great opportunity for our intervention. And you also have to know that in our country, we are going through a huge struggle against the accords of the national government and the IMF. This is one fight that we lead through the MSP, through the leftist front. We are coordinated with hundreds of organizations from popular sectors. And when this accord is dealt with in the Congress, we will mobilize. And we think that it is important important to mention that here, because of what we women are going to suffer, we working women, young women are going to suffer because of this um, agreement, uh, because capitalist governments are um, making agreements with the AMF to pay for a outstanding and fraudulent debt. They do it. Uh, through austerity measures. And it is women and working women and workers in general and sexual diverse people, the ones who are going to suffer those austerity measures the most. Most of you know about IMF uh, measures and they try to submit our people. So we are going to keep on struggling and fighting against precarization, against low wages. We are going to keep working towards higher wages, working rights. We don't want them to extend um, the reti retiring age. And since we are an active part of those struggles for the environment, for our uh, regions and territories, um, they also have measures um, to keep on working with destructivist techniques. And we know that we workers, women, and sexually diverse people are the ones who are going to lead. Um, we are going to deal with the consequences of those techniques. So the struggles that we are carrying out against this system against the father of all violence. This system is going through a great crisis. It is a crisis that did not start today, but that started previously, and the pandemic did 
deepen it. And as I just said, we are the main victims of it. So we need to organize um, to lead this struggle because in these moments of crisis in which there are a, there is a huge polarization, a social polarization, uh, we see it right now in social and political polarization in which the right wing grows, but there's also a bigger space for us to build ourselves for resistance, for struggle and organization in which our positions and our proposals for revolutionary socialism is able to reach more comrades, to reach the youth, to reach poor women, to reach female workers of different sectors. And that's where we have to um, intervene. That's where women of the International Socialist League should intervene because governments and reformist governments um, keep on talking about capitalism, that there is no other way out. And we have to be clear that there's another way out, that that is fake, that we have to relentlessly work to convince other people that the way out is a socialist world. That's the world we fight for. That's the world we build each day. That way out is internationalist. And we, I will um, end with what I said at first. We have no frontiers there. Don't divide us. Languages don't divide us. We speak the same language, the one of the working class, and that is why, comrades, we have to fight to the end for a world without class oppression, without gender oppression. And in this conference, we have to strengthen this fight that we lead in each of our countries, the coordination to choose a path of the building of the revolutionary party to take this fight to the end. International coordination is very important and it is part of what we do in the ISL by um, meeting each other in different regions with many differences. But one thing in common, we are sure and convinced that there is no way out without defeating the system, the father of all violences. So that's why, comrades, I think that it is of great importance to have this perspective to keep on working in unity. And as I said before, I want to greet you and welcome you all. Now, Daria will speak, our comrade from Turkish SEP. Hello, comrades. It is really nice to see you here. Un placer it is aquí. very, very, very busy, but eh, very happy. Hay muchísimas personas, eso es muy positivo. Uh, cities of the country. And this internationalist perspective we have been organizing here is very important. And there is no other example for this in these days, nowadays. And there is no other examples like ISL do, organizing both countries in war, in imperialist war, under imperialist war. So uh, more power to the comrades in Moscow, in um, St. Petersburg, who are struggling against the uh, Putin's war. More power to the comrades in the Ukraine, who have been giving struggle against the NATO liberals, fascists, and the occupation at the same time. So under these circumstances, uh, we have been giving uh, very important struggles all over the world. I'm really looking forward to hear all the comrades and listen to their experiences of struggle from different continents. And my presentation, as always, um, I try to be complementary with Celeste's ideas and Celeste's introduction to not to repeat the same ideas because all our heart beats in the way, in the same way, our mind uh, speaks the same. So being complementary is the best in this way to not repeat each other. So uh, the com comrades, um, as we have discussed in uh, our first great first Congress in the Buenos Aires, we had put aside that our, the economic crisis had already started in 2008 and strengthened its tendencies with the pandemic that is deepening all over the world nowadays. And as a part of this huge imperialist uh, 
competition and deep crisis, we now see not only the imperialist war, but also huge impoverishment of the working masses and the more oppression over the women and LGBTI people. So uh, major riots had already took place in many countries before the pandemics, uh, in Ecuador, Iraq, Sudan, France, Lebanon, and the USA, and some rest of the world. And we saw women on the front line of these battles. So we are in a new period of huge class struggles, imperialist wars, and, and big crisis of the regimes and systems. So women should be at the forefront of these battles because we have two main tasks, changing the system from the beginning now, changing the minds of the working class, erasing all the sexism, nationalism, and bourgeois ideas and revolutionary, uh, make, um, imposing the revolutionary ideas in the class struggle, uh, put the more hegemony on the working class ideas, revolutionary ideas all over the world. So as a part of this, we have to organize the working class women and young women in the front line. So uh, what we had already seen after the 2008 crisis was a huge reaction against Trump, and Bolsonaro, again, women and LGBTI people was already on the front line. But unfortunately, and when these leaders triggered the reactions of millions of women and LGBTI people, unfortunately, liberal identity politics dominated these movements. And these protest waves created an energy of struggles, but its effect were very limited. It is the same case in Turkey. Uh, under Erdogan regime, uh, Erdogan has been ruling Turkey for 21 uh, years. It has changed. He has changed the system, turned into a dicta dictatorship. And one of the most dynamic population under Erdogan regime has been the women. Even under the state of emergency era, we always took the streets against violence, against the Istanbul Convention protest, etc. But this, we have, we are also living the same crisis in the women movement. The general crisis of the left in the world is causes a crisis also in the women's struggle. I'm putting aside the Argentinian case uh, aside because it's it has been a real socialist intervention and a big. Uh, success in terms of gaining uh, concrete rights. But in the rest of the world, the situation is completely different, I think. Of course, it, all countries have its peculiar examples. But as a general line, as a general tendency, especially in the West, in the US, in Europe, that dominates the world politics, we see the liberal identity politics that is also the same in Turkey. Um, so uh, the hegemony of women's struggle handed over to the liberalism. But if you look at the history of women's struggle, women's rights, we will see that the strength of revolutionary struggle was only the main force to win all the determinant fights for women's rights. The peak of this was the Bolshevik Revolution. The Bolshevik Revolution, for the first time in the history, separated the kitchen from the family, the cave work, was socialized and it has given freedom to all sexual identities and took a huge step to liberate women and abolished all the gender roles. It was only the beginning with this construction of socialism. So it's still the peak point of humanity. And today we are entering an era of crisis, wars, uprising, and even revolutionaries or pre-revolutionary conditions. As we saw in Kazakhstan, we, we will be seeing courageous class struggles. As we will be seeing in Ukraine, we will be seeing in the, in the atomic bomb threats and imperialist barbarism. In short, the objective conditions open up great possibilities to barbarism or socialism. As a part of, as a very, very main part of this struggle, revolutionary movement struggle, 
women's struggle and LGBTI struggle should be the main force to change the system from the within, from the very from very its fundamentals, from uprooted. So Turkey is also going through a very critical period. As I had already said, the social position of women suffered a great decline under this oppressive capitalist regime. Violence against women has skyrocketed. Women's employment in Turkey is not even reach 30%. In secure and flexible employment models, such as part-time models, supported, promoted by bosses and government to keep women doing housework, that violence against women increases parallel to the poverty. So we have to see the class character of women question in all over the world. Now we have been experiencing the worst economic crisis of our uh, history. Inflation approaching is 100%. And now we have been seeing chat strikes and spontaneous worker struggles in industrial, industrial zones and factories. And in these factories, uh, what we have seen is the women workers spontaneously started struggles against unequal, work, unequal jobs, unequal uh, wages, and bad working conditions. And for the first time, for after long years, this is the first time working women awakened and took initiative to better their working conditions. So, but this is this is unorganized, this is spontaneous. So we have to intervene this and we have to organize this working women uh, class movement. And this has been also a very important uh, case, how to change working class men in the class movement. Because at the first beginning of this class struggles, Women workers says that uh, our male classmates says that keep your distance, be careful about what you're doing, etc. But now they saw that no, we will we have to keep fine, we have to be on the front line. They learn from their experiences and they change their class conscious in their through their experiences. So this is a good, a very good example, and what what has been doing on, has been happening under the surface of uh, society in Turkey, and this has to be organized. And this is the case all over the world. But comrades, the women women movements uh, has the ideological problems. We have to intervene in this also this arena. That is the identity politics that also only targets men as individuals, not the system, not the bosses. So their main focus is to just exclude men from the struggle and reject class, deny class struggle, and just uh, put all the energy on the so-called males. So, uh, this is not possible to, it is not possible to fight sexism in the society in this way. It is not possible to change the system in this way. It is not possible to fight against this kind of authoritarian regime, just focusing on this kind of uh, mentality. So, uh, but at the same time, they reject uh, changing the system. And they really have no uh this course have no plan have no program about the majority of the poor women they are only just have a tiny uh, middle class woman tiny middle class petty bourgeois ide ideology so although we have been enlarging powers on the streets in the woman movement we have not achieved any real struggles on the street until today so this has to be changed. In Turkey, as SEP, we have been uh, creating uh, front lines, a united front with left women organizations. Uh, we will be organizing our March 8 protests together. And also, 
uh, as said, we have been giving a harsh um, ideological struggle in Turkey that are determinant struggles in Turkey in the socialist left. Uh, and so ideological battle combi combined with class struggle it should be our banner. But this urgent task to organize working class movement with radical ideological tendencies and a real revolutionary program is the urgent task. But we have to organize this, of course, through concrete struggles such as abortion rights, equal pay struggles, struggles for kindergartens, and struggles against violence. Uh, and any change in the balance of powers uh, in the class struggles have a reflection in the life of women and LGBTI people. So, and it, this is not only a matter of, this is, cannot be only a matter of in the national level. This should be an international level. So any victory in any country of our comrades achieved is also our victory to change these balances of power in the class struggle. So what the uniqueness of the ISL is this, organizing any country to change these balances of power in the class struggle in the internationalist level. And this past necessitates fighting the world socialism against capitalism, not in a, in a single country, but all over the world, for socialist world revolution, for working women, for LGBTI people, for all the oppressed people, death to imperialism, long live socialist revolution. Gracias, Daria. Thank you, Daria. Okay, so um, right now we are going to ask Rihanna from Pakistan to uh, get ready. And before she begins, I would like to explain one more time um, the situation about the languages in case there was any difficulty understanding that. All participants in their main screen at the bottom right of their screen, they have a little world icon. In that icon, you will find the different channels for uh, the different languages. You will find English, Spanish, those of us who need Turkish translation can choose the Chinese channel, and there is also a French channel. You can look it up. If you cannot see the icon, it says translation. Ahí espero que todos puedan continuar. O directamente tienen tres puntitos quienes están desde su celular. Those of you who are using our their, their cell phones, your smartphones, there, is, there are three little dots in which you are going to find the channels, the different channels for the translations. In whichever language you choose to listen, you will be able to listen to the different simultaneous translation of the comrades. So now Rihanna will speak from the struggle from Pakistan, and then Sofia, militant of the Ukrainian Socialist League, after Rihanna will um, make her intervention. So Rihanna, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Comrade, Comrade Sally, and all the comrades. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak up in a very marvelous conference. Uh, first of all, I would like to tell you all that my English is not very good. Uh, can you hear me, comrade? Yes, we hear Hello. you, Rihanna. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, comrade, my English is not very good, so I would like to apologize already. Uh, comrades, today we are here to celebrate International Working Women Day, uh, as you all, comrade, know. And this day uh, has a very marvelous history, a uh, victorious history that the uh, women of 
late 19th and 19th and early 20th century have fought a, a victorious, a marvelous history against the exploitation at that time. Uh, uh, comrades, the women that had fought a battle at that time uh, won a lot in the history. And uh, before that, uh, as you comrades know, the women had no right to vote. Uh, they, uh, they had no boundaries of working hard like they, uh, they would work all day long and there was no boundary of uh, the working horse like eight horse or 10 horse or all that. And, uh, and similarly, there was uh, the issue of workplace harassment uh, like today's issue. So the work, the women uh, like uh, the comrade Clara Zetkin and and some other comrades at that time in 1908 uh, they they have uh, organized a meeting uh, and uh, they organized many protests at that time and uh, the origin of International Working Women Day was uh, was originated from uh, from that that time. But still, comrade, uh, if we uh, look at the uh, at the situation now, the basic question of the exploitation, uh, the, the basic question is this: that the what is the basic exploitation of a woman? The question which separate us from the injutic point of view and from the liber uh, liberal point of view. Someone might tell us that the beating of a woman or in acid attacks or or the things like that, or the torture is the basic exploitation. But as a Marxist, we, we understand that, we believe that the, the repetitive, uninteresting labor at the house uh, without any consideration in the budget or, uh, or in the GDP, and without any wage, without any, any payment, any salary, is the basic exploitation of a woman at the, at the house. Uh, for instance, uh, I would like to say that when, when a man or when a worker enters in any factory in any or in any ind industry and sells his labor for eight hours or, or ten hours, and when he leaves the factory, the, the factory owner or the capitalist do not make sure for him or do not facilitate him to wash his, his clothes or to clean the house or to cook the food for him at his house. But this is the woman. She does all the things for free without any consideration, without any any wage for him, and 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 this is the basic exploitation of a woman at at the house. But other uh, on the other hand, the the working woman, uh, she is facing the same exploitation and the same issues yeah, no that problem. she that the working woman no, no, had no, no, fought no, no, no. Uh, a battle against against almost one century. Uh, one or ten years, uh, one hundred and ten years ago, and the capitalism, the, the situation of capitalism as it gener uh, degenerated in its uh, as a, as the crisis has gone worst in capitalism, the situation of women in the society has gone worst along uh, along that, and the, after the crisis of two thousand eight, we can see that the situation is uh, among among. Uh, Women is more worst in whole the world, uh, uh, and specifically in, in third world and the countries like Pakistan. And uh, when we talk about the country like like Pakistan, the, the situation of women or the women question is is uh, I would like to say that it's uh, most pathetic, uh, uh, like the country in Pakistan and Afghanistan. Many of you comrades might have seen the issues and might have seen the news from the country uh, like Pakistan that uh, what, what is the situation of actual actual social situation for a woman to live in uh, in the country uh, suffering with the with the height of uh, religious and extremism and mentality and in Pakistan uh, uh, there, there is a a feminist movement is also present, but uh, we cannot say that. Still, we cannot get the roots to uh, to the working woman in this movement. 
the movement is also uh, the feminist movement in pakistan is mainly uh, 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 is consist upon the the middle class or the or the intellectual class of of the country but uh, we are we are here trying to uh, tr- trying to connect over movement with with the masses or with the working class but comrades we believe that if the uh, question of women emancipation uh, if do not address the question uh, class question it cannot uh, uh, elaborate correctly at any point uh, the to address the women question without addressing the class question is like a joke to the movement of working class uh, of the, the fight of women emancipation cannot fi- be fought cannot fight with uh, along with alone with the uh, fight of uh, men working men because we understand that the issues or the or the problems or the exploitation for the working women or the working men uh, are same and we cannot fight the, uh, the fight this battle on uh, on a separate level so that's why we cannot claim ourselves uh, separately as feminist uh, when we claim ourselves as as marxist because we understand that the Uh, the issue or uh, or the or the problem uh, uh, with women question only can be solved in socialism so when we claim ourselves as as a as a marxist uh, we understand that the that this issue like the comrade before me has talked about it that the women question only can be solved in socialism like in 1917 they have uh, they have uh, solved the the question, women question or they have uh, they have solved many uh, issues related to women uh, uh, after the russian Re- revolution in uh, bolshevik revolution in russia and today comrades we uh, here we, uh, in pakistan we uh, we would like to say all of you that let's come together and fight a battle together the fight of working men and fight of working uh, working women together because we understand that the, uh, the that the question of feminism is different for the uh, uh, for the women of elite and is it is different for the women of uh, working class uh, an elite woman or a or a woman of uh, um ruling class is uh, indeed more powerful than uh, than a man of working class so we cannot generalize the question of feminism for all the men and all the women it is basically it is the question of uh, it is it is very close to it is related to class question so we cannot uh, fight separately uh, but we can fight together and we can win thank you so much comrade Gracias, Rihanna. Thank you, Rihanna. And now, as I said before, Comrade Sofia, if you are there, and then to continue, we are going to make an invitation to Marianne. Yafait from Kenya, so that after Sofia, they can say some words. and we invite the rest of the panelists to also uh, add themselves on the list. We all already have uh, Socorro from Costa Rica. Uh, so please add yourself to the list so that we can keep on with all the interventions and trying to monitor the minutes. We have not that much time so that we can go forward with the meeting.
ahí esperamos a ver si Sofía puede activar su audio. Si no, les proponemos a las compañeras de Kenia. Marianne. We're waiting until Sofia turns on her, her audio and if she can do that, uh, we ask the comrades from Kenya and uh, to intervene. Marianne. Yes. Ok. Bueno, las presento. Marianne Casina y Mino, Gia. Yeah. Sí, son compañeras de Kenia. I introduce son... you to Marianne and Mino from Kenia. They are comrades from the uh, International Revolutionary League and we uh, let them speak uh, now. Uh, revolutionary greetings, comrades. Uh, my name is Marianne Casina uh, from Kenya, yes. Uh, from a uh, part of the a comrade from the Revolutionary Socialist League and convener of Women's Social Justice Center, which is a grassroots uh, movement from uh, here in Nairobi and in Kenya uh, that brings together women uh, from all informal settlements, uh, which is, uh, and Women in Social Justice Center is part of the Social Justice Center's working group, which, which is also a national movement. Uh, I would let me know, Char, to say hi to you, comrades, as we we participate to this conference uh hello comrades uh, i'm very glad to be uh part of this uh session and uh, i believe together we are going to win this class work yes so here in kenya as we speak uh today we're speaking uh, uh in the aspect of the international social women uh and the, as we know here in kenya is the bed of the capitalist it, it's not easy to organize here in Kenya because uh, as, as a grassroots woman, who is not a privileged woman also, who, are, uh, who is going a lot of uh, crisis due to the uh, capitalism and imperialism as, as we're discussing here. And uh, so uh, I'll give in that in the context of here in Kenya and as a grassroots uh, organizer, as a feminist, uh, where we, we understand that in our daily organizing, patriarchy continues to exist because uh, the male, uh, even within our circle, even within our social organizing, uh, that patriarchy is something that we have. It's a fight that as women we have to combat because, and men have to join us in this struggle. Men have to, to fight side by side with the women because this is not the fight women alone. So they have to ensure that they, they fight the man dominance in themselves because it's, it's, it's a struggle for we women, even within our circle that we have to question the male dominance. Like here in Kenya, as, an, as, a, as a grassroots organizer, we continue to experience uh, challenges of police violence. While, while we are questioning the little even uh, for the state of uh, asking for basic need, you know, uh, because we are uh, we, we, we in a country that even uh, accessing basic needs, something like housing, water, uh, menstrual products, education is something that as grassroots people, that it's something that we are not privileged of. And that is the bright, uh, the, it's like removing someone's dignity, you know? That is, does not give us uh, the, the dignity of a human being that has to live with. We are, we are deprived of or stripped of our, uh, our dignity. And that uh, is understand that poverty is violence itself. So we continue to see violence in, a, in our daily lived life. Every day we experience violence. We've grown, uh, I've grown in an informal settlement where I've seen, uh, I've experienced gender-based violence. I continue to see women uh, continue to experience gender-based violence, police violence, and you know, having police violence, the system continues to put women into, 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 into oppression because giving birth, it's labor itself. And our women giving birth and the police are here killing our children. The Women's Social Justice Center is being on front line saying not police execution here in Kenya. And, and this is a fight that we continue to fight. And it's, as, as I've heard our, uh, my fellow uh, panelists speak about the class issue. 
And knowing that here uh, we have uh, the middle class who mostly work in the NGOs and do not yeah, connect no, to our travel. And as grassroots, uh, as grassroots uh, organizers, we lack resources. We do not have resources. And 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 our and our struggle continues to be a double struggle because we lack resources. We are less privileged. We lack even even comrades organizing lack access even to if that basic need. It's a comrade that is also lacking that basic need. So it shows there's need to continue fighting. And the and the middle class have to commit their class suicide and join the proletariat woman in this fight. And also bringing the aspect of the international solidarity. It's a it's it's. It's, it's a milestone to our, to our organizing because we have to understand that our struggle, no woman is free until all women are free. And our struggle is in interconnected. The struggles of women uh, in Venezuela, in Cuba, in, Ta uh, in Turkey, the Kurdistan women, it's our struggle. In Palestine, it's our struggle. They are not free and we are not free. No woman is free until the other woman is free. So we have to... Uh, to show the aspect of international solidarity, Pan-Africanism, until all women are free. So let me you know, also give uh, input, uh, in, inputs on what she has to speak on this conference. Um, I believe uh, Mariana said much. Uh, what I would like to just add is that um, here in Kenya, as we continue to organize, we are, uh, as Marianne said, this is the backyard of capitalism. So it gets really very difficult to organize women. They have, um, you know, culture, religion, and all that kind of, um, you know, all bondages. that kind of uh, historical bondages, historical bondages that are bonding women to, you know, historical cultures that are not really helping them, that, are, you know, make them to continue with this uh, oppressive system. So uh, majorly what we are doing here in Kenya is uh, trying to educate women, doing a lot of political educations, mm -hmm. forming uh, cells uh, nationally, for women to read and understand what is patriarchy, because we all we all know that uh, patriarchy is a system, and patriarchy is not only uh, oppressing women; it is also oppressing men. It is putting them into very, um, also very difficult situations uh, to, you know, cope up with, uh, you know, this uh, class struggle, class issues, because they are expected to provide, they are expected to do what, which is not even possible for a man to do that right now. So uh, we are going to be educating women, and I would like to urge all of us in every space that we are, let us educate women, let us do more political education to our women, let us make them understand that this is a class struggle, it is a class issue. Thank you very much, comrades. Gracias, compañeras. Un gusto y un orgullo compartir este espacio con ustedes. Bueno, ahora le pedimos a Sofía. Thank de... you, comrades. We are proud of sharing this space with you. Um, Sofía from Ukraine. Sofía Boychuk. Sofía Boychuk. If you are able to unmute Sofía Boychuk de la Liga Socialista Ucraniana Bueno, cuando empezamos pudimos hablar con ella, ahora puede ser que tengamos algún problema de conexión. Um, we were able to speak with her at the beginning of the meeting, but she may be experiencing uh, some connection issues. She's in the middle of all this war that the Russian imperialism has um, put forward. We will keep on insisting because it is really important for us uh, that she is able to speak in this um, international conference heading, heading towards the 8th of March. So we will continue with the list and we will talk with Sofia later. So right now we have Socorro. I will um, keep on calling you so that we can move forward with the intervention. I will tell you which is the next um, speaker. So let's take into account the timing issue. When you have reached 
four minutes because the limit is five minutes. I can make you a signal so that you know that you have been speaking for four minutes. So following us is um, Socorro from the Revolutionary Movement of Workers from Costa Rica. Good morning, comrades. Greetings to all of you. In the name of I and my comrades, I am representing them from the PRT from Costa Rica. I wanted to tell you that part of my experience from where I come from, I am from Nicaragua. I am a migrant here in Costa Rica where I have learned a lot and I have been educated and informed in the PRT. I wanted to tell you that as women, we have to fight to defeat the patriarchy Uh, has marginalized us, and that's my point of view. And I wanted to tell you that we have to defeat. Well, we are women, working women, fighting and working women, and we fight for our freedom, and we have to fight for equality, so that we can move forward, each and every of us. As women, you may know that we are the ones that lead every struggle, any struggle. And on the other hand, I would like to tell you, comrades, that our struggle is to help the ones that need, that need the struggle the most. For poor people, we need to defeat capitalism that submits us to this misery. And I think that we won't be equal until we defeat capitalism. So what we have left, what is our task, is to keep on fighting until we finally are able to defeat the patriarchy that we can, we are great fighters and we have went through so much and we have overcome that. Uh, we know that we are aware of the Ukrainian situation and that that war affects us too because we women are always exposed in, in war processes because we are the ones who are raped whose rights are violated. So focus in our struggle so that we can eradicate capitalism, which is um, submitting us. And it is a pleasure to be able to share my words with you. And I hope, um, I really do, that we can share our knowledge, that we can have this, um, maybe at some moment, another meeting, to be able to get to know each other more. Revolutionary. Greetings to all of you and keep going. Thank you, Socorro, for your participation. So now we are going to hear Patricia Sotorica from Militant from Rumbo Socialista from Uruguay um, so that she can go ahead. And then we are going to listen to Veronica from Socialist Alternative from Brazil. Hello, good afternoon, comrades. It's a great pleasure to be here with you. First of all, I'd like to greet the Ukrainian comrades. And uh, I would like to mention that uh, every word is uh, 
has to be rejected. Um, even though we are in the middle of the conflict, there are also several conflicts going on as well. And we have to, we don't have to forget the Palestinian conflict. And uh, we have to keep an eye on the other conflicts going on with the, because women are uh, the ones that uh, get the, the worst part. Especially in the armed conflicts where women take the, as I was saying, the, the worst part um, in matter of uh, rapes. Uh, that is a common practice of the winning uh, army or has been historically uh, because of this uh, conception of the women's uh, body being uh, an object. Uh, so we have to fight uh, for the, the, the right uh, that we have to fight against this uh, this idea that the, our bodies are uh, the, the, the property of the state or of the man or of anybody. Of course, uh, when there is war, there are there is also an uh, economic crisis, and that hits uh, women uh, very hard as well. We are the the, the, the sector of the, of the population that uh, is special, is specific, especially uh, poor. I would like to tell you that Uruguay, in the last years has had uh, significant advances in the in the matter of women's rights. Uh, uh, in 2012, uh, we had the, the approval of the uh, abortion law, or the, the, the wave uh, here was uh, orange. But as the, the majority of the women uh, conquests in matter of rights, but to be clear, uh, the, the last two years we have had a right-wing uh, government that has tried to to restore uh, the, the the values of the of the dominant class and. And for that, we have we have been suffering uh, the the working women. Uh, these attempts to uh, go behind uh, in the in the matter of uh, uh, of the of our rights of our rights the we have con of the rights we have conquered. This uh, pre. Each time uh, we have had a, an attempt from the government to to go back, we have responded and uh, to be to, to, to give an example uh, when they they tried to 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 change the the procedures. Uh, we took the streets and uh, um, we won the fight because they couldn't advance with this attempt to 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 take rights away from us. We are we are constantly uh, on a state of alert, and there is a there. We are um, maybe the more uh, visible resistance of this government. We are uh, going through very difficult times. Uh, in fact, uh, it is uh, it is really tangible that uh, in, in this moment of uh, of intense fight, uh, there is a kind of uh, habilitation. So uh, some behavior, some behaviors uh, have uh, social licenses. As we know, this is a global issue, but we had a process here. Well, a lot of uh, different behavior um, issues like by rapes and uh, abuses. And there was a case, a significant, a significant case of uh, the rape of a girl by two policemen inside of a police car. Uh, 
So we are going through a difficult uh, moment regarding that. And I will try to sum up because I always have a lot to say. We also have a position towards this uh, issue the comrades talked about, which is the combination between class and gender. That's something that, that we should have to discuss. Um, obviously, we have a position of class struggle, but it is, uh, there are uh, feminists, uh, right-wing feminists because of capitalism and uh, the patriarchy. Uh, it is really difficult to um, fight against uh, the patriarchy and also fight against capitalism without fighting against capitalism. So there is a lot that we have to reform and that we have to heal inside our own socialist movement. Generally, the represent women's representation is belittled or it is less than in other movements. We are not equal, not even in our own organizations. This is natural uh, because in this system, we also um, have this kind of conduct. But in 1884, we are the women are the proletariat of the proletariat. Uh, of course, we have to fight both capitalism and patriarchy. Uh, and we have to take action regarding our role inside leftist movement. So uh, greetings to you all. And I think that this is a great opportunity to learn one from the other and to be able to hear you all. Thank you. Thank you, comrades. As I said before, uh, we are going to listen Veronica O'Kelly. She's from Socialist Alternative from Brazil. And after Vero, we will hear Catherine from the Commune of France. Good afternoon from Brazil. Um, good night from others. First of all, it is a great pleasure to see all of you here. Some of you I already know, some of you are new. And um, I am glad I was able to hear comrades from Kenya. I want to say welcome for you. Um, a solidarity uh, greetings for all of you, to all of you working women that are now here um, making um, all kinds of demonstrations and actions for Ukrainian, the Ukrainian people um, in their fight against the Russian attack. I hope that we were able to listen to you today. So the situation in Brazil, some things were already said about the women's situation in the world. So I would like to be more specific on the women's situation in Brazil. Uh, Brazil is a big uh, Latin American country that shares and has a horrifying numbers and figures about what we suffer, we women from Latin America suffer. Uh, and it is quite worse than other countries, for example, poverty in our country, but well, at, at, in the world too. But in 2020, 2021, it grew greatly. Numbers are horrifying. And that is due, that also hits women and black women more. They are the ones who suffer is the most. So uh, violence has class, has race, and has a gender. And we use that slogan a lot here. Uh, feminists in Brazil use that slogan a lot because it is a thing that it's, it's really horrifying. It's awful and the numbers are unbelievable. 28 million women, 28 million people are in extreme poverty. And that 
that quantity, that's 30% of the population, most of them are women. 70% of them are women. So class and gender are strictly um, linked in case of extreme poverty. We, it is this, there are no, um, there is no future guessing of it getting better. And our fight is against capitalism and also against the patriarchy. There were a few things mentioned. The Kenya comrades talked about uh, particular situations like uh, menstrual poverty. Last year, there was a project that was presented for the government to um, distribute tampons and pads and Bolsonaro uh, stopped that process, but that is the, uh, there are objective conditions in which we women suffer poverty more than men and um, Bolsonaro is against all of those uh, policies, assistance policies. And that uh, results in um, lower budgets, Today, Brazil is in the fifth place of gender violence. The figures for femicides are unbelievable. This last year, 2021, there was a femicide each six hours. And we know that this information is always manipulated and do not reflect reality correctly, but that number is honestly horrifying. So here in Brazil, we do have, obviously, we have different women's movements, organizations. We from Socialist Alternative share spaces with other comrades in the PSOL from uh, different uh, organization spaces. And we clearly have a debate with those comrades who understand that the gender struggle it is that separated from the fight against capitalist system. But um, that is how this conference is so important and so real and concrete and correct, because we understand that working women don't have another alternative to fight for our conquests and victories. And in order to get more and to also defend the ones that we already won in different uh, parts of the world, uh, the solution is to fight for socialism and for revolutionary socialism. So I greet you all and see you in the streets. Thank you so much, Vero from Socialist Alternative. And now um, Catherine will speak from from the commune from France, Catherine. And our comrade from Ukraine is trying to solve the sound issue so that she can speak. After Catherine, after Catherine, Sara from Paraguay. Bonjour, camarade. Bonjour à tous et toutes. Euh, tout d'abord, avant, avant euh, notre déclaration, euh, je voudrais dire euh, toute ma solidarité et toutes mes pensées euh, vont euh, à, aux femmes, à nos sœurs ukrainiennes euh, qui subissent euh, une agression euh, terrible, et puis aussi aux Afghanes, euh, à nos sœurs palestiniennes euh, dont nous sommes euh, totalement euh, solidaires. C'est un constat à faire. Les femmes sont les premières victimes de la crise du capitalisme, de la crise économique, de la guerre, des réactionnaires. Where they had to, to, to work on the hospitals, on the cleaning uh, areas. The, the, the working women were uh, the ones.
advance that they are that support of the society is discriminant envers les femmes. En France, la situation s'est encore aggravée depuis le début de la pandémie. Par exemple, les femmes gagnent en moyenne 28,5% de moins. Um, women earn in average 28.5% less than men. Retirement are 38% lower and women are more than 80% of monoparental families. And 41% of them had lower income during the health crisis. Access to jobs or is lower than the men, even for work, uh, working positions. Uh, most of part-time workers are women, and even those who are more educated than men, young women, have the same unemployment rate than men. And of course, they have to also take care of the unpaid housing labor. In France, 213,000 uh, violent aggressions each year, and there were 113 women killed last year. One each two female employers, employee, employees have uh, dealt with abuse or harassment in their job. Regarding human trafficking, 85% of the persons who are trafficked are women. 30,000 are uh, being prostituted, and most clients are men. All these cases of violence shouldn't be accepted nor acceptable anymore. We want violence to stop. We want a just and equal society. Same jobs, same wages, same rights. Those are all urgent um, demands. And through class struggle, in which women advance and get political visibility globally, demanding to enhance working conditions for everyone, they take the streets and they are willing to turn everything over. We have our victories for abortion laws, strikes, barricades, during working um, working strikes, strike, women are there present in every struggle. They reject being playing a secondary role. They have their own slogan and they get their own victories. In this sense, they are not a complement of class struggle, but one of its main engines. However, there are many organizations which um, identify themselves like working organizations don't have women in their organizing structures. We need an integral emancipation, a complete emancipation, the end of the patriarchy and the end of its father, capitalism. And that's why the ISL is against all forms of exploitation and oppression, working women for equality and socialism. Thank you so much. Thank you, Catherine from the French Commune. Um, as I was telling you previously, uh, now Sara from Socialist Alternative Paraguay will speak, and then we will hear Maura from Anti-Capitalist Movement from Chile. Well, first of all, I will like to send you great revolutionary greetings. We are uh, making such a great step in this global context 
um, hunger, misery, war, in this context, um, our organization expresses our solidarity with the Ukrainian people who is now being hit by imperialism. We express our solidarity to the people of Ukraine and to the people of Russia who are now prisoner of their bourgeois actions. And the, the workers have nothing to do with those actions. And we say out with Putin, out with Zelensky too. Here in Paraguay, how the rights of women are turned over by the government. And this has proved the great levels of femicide six deaths in one day. There are only 7 million inhabitants in Paraguay. Every four minutes, a woman suffers a kind of violence. Each day, there's one or two cases of femicide. There are cases of teenage pregnancy in which there is no guarantee for public health And it often, the government often ignores all of our issues. There is an annual budget that is destined to the army and the police sector of many millions of dollars. And that means that the women's ministry only gets two million. That would be two dollars for each woman. That's the budget. I want to tell you that Paraguay has always avoided uh, rights equality. It was the, the last country in Latin America to approve women's voting. Our land is under the service of agribusiness. So peasant women are also subjected to this oppression. We are submitted to all the options and decisions of the Bushwa-Fi government. Without internationalism, we won't be able to fight this triple alliance of the government, capitalism, and businesses. In Socialist Alternative, we are preparing for this 8th of March to be representatives of the ISL. In, and also we take part of the feminist uh, national articulation. So we will fight to get one of our comrades to be in the stage, in the main stage, with slogans such as out with the IMF, for public and quality education, for abortion rights, for the separation of the state and the church, the trans uh, law and the gender identity law, and of course, to get the feminicide emergency situation uh, at a national stage, to be able to build refugees, Today, we only have, in the whole country, we only have two refugees. So comrades, let's unite for socialism and equality. Thank you, Sara from Paraguay, from Socialist Alternative. And now we are going to hear Maura from the anti-capitalist movement from Chile. Give me a second. So I can tell uh, the comrade from the Lebanon from Lebanon to get ready for her intervention. All yours, Maura. Hello, everyone. First of all, I would like to repudiate the imperialist war and to say that there is no progressist field when the worker when workers are dying and people are dying. A day such as today, uh, Rosa Luxemburgo was born 
uh, what she said, socialism and bar bar barbarism uh, resonates until today. We are also remembering the femicide of Berta Cáceres, defending water and territory. So it is evident, as many have said before, um, in previous interventions in this uh, framework of capitalist crisis that has been open since 2008, um, all the contradictions began to deepen, uh, resulting in a brutal crisis in which women and feminized bodies, um, we don't re the reproduction of the contradictions of capitalism and patriarchal system, we get the worst part. So in this framework, we see in international um, context, different expressions which put into question who are the ones who produce and reproduce life. And that's when we started to speak about the reproductive and domestic labor and all the violences that we experience. So it is evident that there are diverse tendencies inside feminist movements in, at international level, and we are an organization, clearly anti-capitalist and socialist and revolutionary organization, in which for a long time has been intervening uh, strongly in the feminist movement. I want to talk about this a little bit because it is very important for the um, current debate in our country. Our feminist wave has a uh, place uh, that's very close to the 2015 in Argentina. For us, it was 2016 after the femicide of Lucia Perez and of a uh, girl of named Florencia, nine-year-old. We had a great mobilization, one of the most massive ones after the dictatorship, which um, put into question the violence to where we we are submitted, so we, there were many or, feminist organization instances that were forming a feminist movement, which was quite diverse, but at the same time, um, very combative movement. So at the international level, we began to see the general strike, a feminist general strike as a great and strong tool so that is to reivindicate the historical workers um, tool of the general strike. So the debate in the feminist movement is about uh, political leadership. In this case, I will talk about the uh, feminist coordinator, which has been the leadership of the calls for a, the 8th of March which can be seen as progressive elements because they are plurinational, because they call for strikes. They are, they have no content, almost no content. And that um, takes the opportunity away from us to build uh, this um, strong women's movement. All that strength is being diluted consciously to have a position um, along with our hand in hand with Boric's government. So we had a call for the 8th of March march, and it is a call for different regional marches, not having a unified slogan, not having assembly. We have never seen this before in these assemblies in which women and diverse um, people take part to make decisions. So this is something new, but this also opens the space for revolutionary and socialist left to intervene in that process. So in this framework, our current policy is um, expressing that there is a great space opening up. Our position is to seek alliances with sectors of feminism, which is more classist, more revolutionary, with working women, which are part of those who have been leading the most important fight in our um, country in the last period. Those fights that um, began the fire of uh, 2019. 
So there's an open debate. It is really important that we are going to keep struggling and to keep intervening in order to strengthen uh, classes, revolutionary feminist polls to fight for all the democratic demands of the feminist movement. And it also fights for the uh, transformation of a horizon of society, which is socialism. So all the issues that we are able to talk about, um, all the violences that we express that women and diversity are subjected to, it's really important to talk about that along with the transitional program and along with our revolutionary ideas. So I would like to greet you all, all of you who are also translating, which we know is such a hard task. So greetings to this International Socialist Women Conference and let's see you in the street. Okay, so that was Maura from the anti-capitalist movement of Chile. So we are going to hear our comrade from Lebanon, from the youth movement for change. Hello, uh, greetings from Lebanon and the youth movement for change to all of you comrades in the ISL. I'm extremely happy to meet all of you today. Uh, I would like to say that my internet is not really stable, so please let me know if it cuts at a certain point. So the situation of women in Lebanon isn't isolated from the struggles of women globally. In Lebanon, 2021 recorded almost a 200% increase in domestic violence cases in comparison to the previous year. The current economic crisis that we are going through is laying its weight on the working class. Women and other marginalized communities are extremely affected by it. In 2022, Lebanese women still cannot pass their citizenship to their children. Women in Lebanon are still facing systemic oppression. Religious courts, can and do ban women from getting custody of their children in case of divorce. In many situations, women were unable to see their children at all. Women and the queer communities in Lebanon are oppressed by capitalism and patriarchy. Migrant workers, for example, especially women domestic workers, are working under an oppressive system that robs them from their freedom and basic rights and doesn't protect them from dire working conditions. They face daily institutionalized racism and they have no legal protection and cannot legally resort to the Labor Arbitration Council. In parallel, most of feminist work in Lebanon is being carried by bourgeois organizations that disregard the struggles of the working class and that advocate for women's rights from a liberal perspective. They see patriarchy as an independent issue from capitalism. Some of these organizations are recently advocating for an active inclusion of women in the upcoming election, an election that clearly serves the bourgeoisie and will be used by current politicians to reclaim their power. Women in the Arab world are similar are in similar, if not worse, situations, living in patriarchal societies and countries. In Palestine, women are fighting the Zionist occupation and leading on national liberation. They are surviving war and aggression in Syria and Yemen. Arab women were historically on the forefront of national liberation movements and of protests and manifestations. For example, and not ex exclusively, Sudanese women. Today, we should all remember <clears throat> that feminism that is not anti-capitalist will never serve the working class, but will rather recreate the systems of oppression towards women and minorities. Solidarity with the working class, solidarity with women of the working class. Thank you.
Muchas gracias, Rim. Te escucho. Thank you so much, Rim. We were able to hear your complete intervention. And as I said um, before, we are going to hear our comrade from Peru um, to speak, and then Ariana from Nicaragua to get ready. Flora? Thank you so much, comrades. Really, it is a pleasure to be here with you, sharing with each of you um, this space. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to express what I feel and to express what I we live in our country, comrades. Nowadays, uh, today, uh, we are heading an International Women's Day. Today is a day of international solidarity, and it is really important to organize among women, proletarian women, and that's why the, this 8th of March is a historical date for working women. And that's why in each country, it was decided to have a Women's Day as a struggle memory to get uh, more rights for working women. So the International Women's Day also helps uh, raise awareness and the organization of proletarian women. From the ISL of Peru, we encourage uh, feminist, socialist, popular, democratic, and diverse organizations, intercultural organizations. That's why we consider it is necessary and to, to break apart patriarchal structures and race, racist structures, which affect deeply all women in our community, to dismantle them. We also identify our feminism like a class feminism, rural feminism, participative, democratic, intersectional feminism that also fights against capitalism and colonialism. For this, um, nowadays in Peru, we are quite worried about how the government has renounced and quitted uh, these um, claims and demands. They don't take the feminist movement seriously. We demand the government to comply with our demands in those struggles, which were those demands that were jointly approved in a biannual plan here, in which we spoke about a real equality for all women in Peruvian territories with gender equality, uh, equality in political participation, and most of all, most important of all, a uh, life uh, free of violence. And that's why we demand also, and we keep on demanding that the state jointly protect the life of all women, especially those who are the most affected by this crisis, indigenous women, migrant women, poor women, sex workers, trans women, violence victim women, those who live in the uh, Amazonian areas of Peru, for each of them, we will keep on building a process, a democratic process that which allow us to create a country with hope. So um, I sent you a great um, hug all the way from Peru. Please, comrades, take care. Thank you, Flor, from Peru. We are now going to hear Ariana McGuire from Socialist Alternative from Nicaragua. And we are going to ask comrade Angela from Socialist Impulse from Colombia to be able to speak after Ariana. OK, thank you, Cele. Greetings to you all. A big greeting to all of you. And those who are um, participating in this uh, conference, 
I wanted to talk about the Nicaraguan situation, especially for women in my country. And even though there have been rebellions and that are, they are being multiplied in Latin America and Asia, Nicaragua has a particular situation because it is going through a reflex uh, as a position against um, the dictatorship since April 2018, where we had a great social uprising. Uh, right now, Ortega Murillo has been uh, leading a campaign against feminist movements and human rights defenders, political leaders. This repressive dynamic is the new normality in Nicaragua and the right to prote protest has been criminalized through repression. And it is through these horrifying policies and this is why we won't be able to protest physically this 8th of March in Nicaragua. Uh, those sectors who are trying to negotiate and dialogue and uh, boosted by the international community and businesses uh, guaranteed the re-election of Ortega Murillo that were reaffirming all the violence and repressive um, actions against women and the working class in general. So this has to be attentively watched over this needs commitment. The situation of our country is uh, there are no freedom. There is no freedom to meet, to gather, express freedom. Those don't exist. And this combined with the crisis due to the pandemic has generated more poverty and misery for most of the working people. And this jointly results in a desperate panorama. And I would like to make emphasis in this uh, part. So there are more than 600 political prisoners. Most of them are women, trans, comrades, students, artists, teachers, human rights defenders, leaders of political parties like Maria Telles, Ana Margarita Mejia, Sara Navila. All of them are nowadays tortured for months. They have no communication with their families, with their lawyers, and they are facing precarious hygiene, education, and living conditions. They are completely isolated. They, they have sunlight, they don't have medical assistance. We have comrades who are prisoners uh, that they are really old comrades from that suffer cancer and other conditions, medical conditions due to the conditions they're living in. So from our organization, we think it is really important to uh, work in uh, international movement for the freedom of all political prisoners in Nicaragua, especially led by the left and the socialist organization. The government of Nicaragua is completely opposed to those ideals that we revolutionaries fight for. So we have uh, given the ISL uh, campaign for the freedom of all political prisoners to be done in April. And we call for all students organizations, to all working organizations to take part in this campaign. It is necessary to express the uh, greatest amount of information about what's going on in this um, country. We need international visibility. The week of the 18th of April, we will be um, leading this campaign. I want to end my intervention saying that the deep transformation won't come hand in hand with the strategy of the businessmen, of the elite, of the bourgeois politicians, uh, but on the contrary, we defend grassroots organizations, popular met methods to be able to turn everything over. Our immediate task in Nicaragua and all the countries of the region 
is to be able to organize independently independently from businessmen and other political organizations from the bourgeois sector. We have a gender and class-based uh, program for Nicaragua, for South America, for the region, for the continent. It is really important for these women to struggle to be set forward, to keep on fighting to recover our rights to decide over everything. So thank you, comrades. Our solidarity with our comrades from Ukraine, from the Ukraine peoples, from the Sahara win, uh, comrades, and from the onto the comrades uh, which are in places in which they cannot march and they cannot demand um, as many other comrades will be able to do. So we invite you to shout along with us freedom to all political prisoners in Nicaragua and out with Ortega Murillo. Thank you, Ariana and Colombia, que seguía en el uso de la palabra. Como les decía recién, before the following comrade, we wanted to get our comrade Sofia from the USL to be part of this conference. But sadly, due to the situation that they are living in right now, as we all we are well aware, um, we won't be able to hear her intervention, but she was able to send us a letter, so I will read it for you. My name is Sofia, and I take part in the USL. The situation of women in my country is unsatisfactory. We don't have positions in the parliament. We are unrepresented in the government, even though great part of the population is in favor of women participation in the parliamentary system. Women take an active role in this country. Many of us oppose Russian imperialism gun in hand. Many of us work in the application of law, law enforcement. Women in Ukraine deal with issues daily our role in families is re are really conservative. Many women believe that our place is in the kitchen and that we should take care of the kids. And it is aggravated and deepened by the popularity of extreme right-wing ideas. These persons often laugh about um, leftist ideas. There is hatred against other population sectors, other races, LGBT community, women. It is unacceptable for those point of view to be shared. I make this claim being a, a person that used to think like that before. Many comrades think that the European Union and other imperialism representatives will free us from dictatorship and oppression. There's an issue also with there not being any alternative in our country. Most of the leftist forces are pro-Russia and are alerting about the threats of Western um, forces, but don't speak about Putin. However, the USL is fighting against any imperialist expression. We have to make a lot of propagandistic efforts. That's the letter that Sofia was able to write just now. And as many comrades reflected, we share our solidarity towards them towards the Ukrainian people and especially towards Ukrainian women. So now, Angela is going to speak. Angela is part of Socialist Impulse of Colombia. I don't know, Angela, if you are able to, to speak. And after Angela, thank you. After Angela, 
we are going to listen to Sol from El Estado Español, from Spain. Can you hear me? Perfect. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you all for this uh, opportunity. It is really a pleasure for me to be able to hear to all the comrades from different countries and also the letter from our comrade from Ukraine. From our organization, we would like to present how women and the LGBT community have uh, put our limitations in the political agenda. First of all, um, against violence based on gender identity and also, uh, second of all, uh, for legal abortion. After two years, after um, demanding the penalization of, the, of abortion, we were able to have a victory for abortion before 24th week. Even if this uh, sanction by the court is something positive, our green wave has to keep on fighting in the streets for our right to decide and to be able to eliminate abortion from the criminal code and to get it to be legal and free and safe because it won't reduce um, this, this laws won't reduce abortions. They only penalize and criminalize women, mainly rural women and peasants and underage women. This is extremely linked to institutions as, as churches. And it's also linked towards the lack of psychological um, assistance. We wanted to talk about how much uh, the, the health crisis and economic crisis, um, how much it was deepened by the pandemic, but also it is a natural fact of capitalism. Um, financial international institutions request austerity measures from those countries they have debts with. with. It is the capitalist system, the one that holds that patriarchal oppression. It benefits from our free labor, from our domestic labor. And that is why capitalism and patriarchy are not something that we can fight separately. Feminists of the world need to uh, fight against the system jointly. Uh, in order to close my intervention, we see that this crisis of the revolutionary leadership is um, of great importance. There is a struggle between radical feminism and progressive feminism or reformist feminism. Radical feminist feminism do uh, are actually transphobic and ignore the problems the class problems and issues, they are punitive, they are defending cancel culture, and they often attack revolutionary organizations. And reformist feminism does call for our um, feminist um, actions, but they don't discuss democratically, they are bureaucratic. However, reformism is not only that. In our struggle against for depenalization, they try to get the law to only cover 14 weeks instead of 24. That means that they curb and they result in a setback for our victory. And they say that the electoral uh, field is the only field in which we can reach real victory. They have alliances with right-wing sectors, businessmen. Uh, the socialist and revolutionary feminism proposes women and also the LGBT community a real way out. Only 
by defeating capitalism can we be victorious with, in, within our fight against the patriarchy. Thank you so much, Angela. Now we are going to hear Flor from Sol, from Spain, and then we will hear Silvia from Lucha Socialista Brasil. We only have five interventions left. We request you to keep on participating until the end of this great international conference. Thank you and good afternoon, good morning, good night, everyone. The good thing about internationalism is that we are present in each time zone. I don't want to um, make a long intervention and be repetitive of what, what, has, what has been said um, until now. So I want to speak a little bit about Western Europe, um, feminism and Spain, feminism. I was hearing different interventions and at the beginning, and there is a characterization that we always made uh, from the fourth uh, feminist wave or from the last feminist wave. There were different feminist currents uh, surrounding this wave. And we or comrades who are part of the ISL consider ourselves feminists and anti-capitalism, uh, capitalists, against uh, the patriarchy and against the capital, because we understand that those are um, two joint struggles. It's not only that we have to fight against bourgeois feminism um, as the main enemy, but here in Western Europe, there is an institutional feminism from progressist government, uh, for example, here in Spanish, in ESOE, and, and we, we remember that our vice president used a t-shirt saying, I am a feminist, the first day of the presidency. They tried to hold tight to that um, flag and, and to those demands, for those feminist demands, we know that they are not going to fight for all our of our rights, but they want to make a reform in order to keep it as, as it is. So we had a strike the 8th of March, or instead of strike manifestation, it was represented through assemblies that don't fight for general rights. There were sectors that thought that or said that the strike should be feminist, not a working strike, that we shouldn't use that tool in this context. And that was reflected in the majority sectors, which almost never take part of the assembly. In Catalonia, the only union that actually called for a strike was a minority union. In Madrid, uh, the word strike has completely disappeared and there was a call for a manifestation. What they said is, let's go back to the streets after submitting feminism towards a social media debate. They have begun saying, let's go back to the streets. So we, from our feminist organization in Spain, think that we have to be coherent and build a great unity and that we have to fight for the strike, maintain the strike. Colombia's comrade also said the same thing. The feminist general strike has been a historical event in, in the world, and we have to strengthen that. There are more and more claims from the feminist movement there are uh, progressive governments that need, want us to think that they have the best proposals but they don't have the political will nor they are not they are not democratic so i think that in this context the anti-capitalism anti-capitalist feminism has a great role to play, for example, with the working reform. I, 
I think that in this context, it is really important to take the split back on the 8th of March, but not only the 8th of March with our usual claims, but to keep on organizing and creating these kind of spaces in each country. I think there is uh, an after and before for women and that there is a debate that we have to play in this context. Intervención ahí, saludar a todas las compañeras que hablaron, las compañeras que están I want to greet all the comrades, all the comrades who are struggling, uh, the comrades from Ukraine, uh, tight hug, we are here for you. And now I can see Chaya too. We have uh, talked in other events about the struggle that they are uh, leading in the Western Sahara. And I think that the ISL and all the or feminist organizations of each country have a great role to play in this global context. And it is really important for us to keep um, working jointly because it is more necessary than ever to do so. Thank you so much, Sol. As I said before, now we are going to listen to Silvia Leticia from Luta Socialista from Brazil, and now to Leica after that. I have one request. It's the first time since we have started, but please speak a little bit slower because of the translation uh, so that all comrades from different countries can understand what we say. Silvia? Hello. First of all, I would like to greet you. I want to um, thank you for this invitation. I want to greet all the women from the world, all the working women, all the struggles that you're a part of. But of course, I would like to greet the struggle of the Kenyan comrades, the Ukrainian comrades. We also have to fight against Bolsonaro who went to Ukraine. We want to apologize for this uh, visit that the sexist fascist uh, Bolsonaro made to Ukraine. We repudiate, we repudiate this Brazilian representative. But I would like to greet, um, I am the teacher, Silvia Leticia. I am part of our socialist organization, Lucha Socialista. And I would like to say that the women a working women's struggle. It's a need on, it's, it is necessary in the socialist building of our organization. We fight for food, work, jobs, wages. That quite much sounds like a struggle uh, against capitalism. Here in Brazil, we have many claims and demands in our struggle that has deepened due to the pandemic, due to the um, capitalist crisis, and due to a genocidal government that is Bolsonaro. In 2017, we were able to take down ministers in our country. We need a strong struggle. There is a comrade Maria Franco from the PSOL who has been assassinated by this government. And we have been fighting for these last four years for justice. And we had an opportunity to overthrow Bolsonaro's government too with LNA movement, but the pandemic, the crisis, sexual abuse, domestic violence, 
have grown so much during this last year, especially for Black women who have three times who are three times more uh, propensious to suffer this kind of violence. Black women are attacked constantly in our country. Until March 2021, there was a great rate of trans people, um, assassinations and murders and domestic violence. We have a great uh, trans uh, population. There is a great amount of trans people and LGBT people here in Brazil. So it is very difficult for them to get inserted in the um, working sector. And the Bolsonaro government not only looks to attack this part of the community, they haven't uh, done any ceasefire towards trans people, LGBT community, indigenous people. All of this situation affects us women. We are much more vulnerable to suffer the effects of this attack. This is a situation of socialism or barbarism. We have no alternative than to keep on fighting this age of March in the streets to repudiate capitalism and the liberal and the neoliberal and austerity measures of Bolsonaro. And the integration of the class struggle inside the women's struggle is very important. It shouldn't be separated. We need to defeat this genocidal government because that, but however, defeating Bolsonaro's government does not mean destroying his austerity plan. And there are many uh, women's movements who are um, insisting in creating a unity front, but only against this government and believing the lies of the PT um, organization. And surely we do have to get a joint organization with other women's movement that share our program and that are willing to debate a leftist program and a joint uh, struggle. So thank you so much. Thank you, Silvia from Brazil. And now I am going to ask Suleika from Venezuela to speak. And now I am going to ask Comrade from Kyrgyzstan, Bernet. After Suleika. <laughs> okay, hello everyone. We greet you all. This first International Socialist Women Conference. And we also want to uh, send a great hug and greetings to the Ukrainian people. In Venezuela, struggling conditions are more urgent every day, have been aggravated by imperialist, um, American imperialism. And in the context of the pandemic, our struggle is necessary. The working class has been object of a deep 
anti-worker policy, which hits women strong, strongly. We have more than 6 million migrants in which women are 51% of that uh, figure. We are talking about official figures that we know are manipulated. So xenophobia and visa limits have uh, resulted in a great amount of illegal immigration, which brings more difficulty for those who have fled the country due to political and economic issues. It also results in precarious life conditions we have been subjected to. Precarious health um, assistance, both in the public and the private sectors. So Maduro was talking about a minimum wage of $29, which now has turned into $27 um, dollars each month. And we know that a living wage nowadays is of $456. This leads to multi-exploitation, multi formal, informal, our uh, job in order to survive. And this is also present with great um, inflation in all of our products and foods. There's also repression and imprisonment of those who fight, of those workers who fight for higher wages, dozens of women, working women, today are prisoners and being processed judicially. Sexual education does not exist. Access to contraceptives does not exist either. Abortion is completely criminalized. Venezuelan women have no control over their own, own bodies. So uh, we have no reproductive rights. The Venezuelan women's movement is really weak. We were able to set some networks to be able to work together, but it has been institutionalized by the feminists from the government, which defend all the austerity measures which affect women. And on the other hand, other feminists that don't fight against the system and that in most cases divide our struggles. From our organization in Venezuela, we insist that we need a feminism of class, a class feminism from working women. We promote mobilization, we promote participation spaces, and we want to build a party of the working class, our access, to fight and to bring over this 8th of March is a salary according to the basic basket, free contraceptives, publication of figures in order to fight gender violence, no to struggle criminalization, no to impunity to, towards um, gender violence, freedom of discussion, debate, and gathering towards women's rights. We want to greet you all. We are very happy with this first International Conference of Socialist Women. And we are all here, really happy to participate and to be able to advance in internationalism. Thank you so much. Thank you, Suleika from Maria Solista. We will now hear We will now hear our comrade Bermet from Kyrgyzstan and then the last comrade Chaya. Bermet, hello everyone. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, super great to uh, be here and uh, as uh, uh, as you know that uh, Kyrgyzstan was a part of Soviet Union and in context of so like 
in the uh, Soviet Union, we had a before project like uh, emancipation of women of East. And even in like 1920s, uh, 30s, in our um, state, there was like the most really progressive legis legislative system for women. So it was like uh, right for education, right, right for uh, uh, political right, votes, and etc. So even like, for example, Switzerland, it was uh, right for vote, it was given in the 80s. So we were in like avant-garde of the women's rights, thanks to the Marxist um, theories like Rosa Luxemburg and uh, others. And it really helped us, but after the collapse of Soviet Union, we were like destroyed with a, like the whole, whole system collapsed with a political and social social uh, social issues. So now we really like a backstage of like everything and every day uh, we we have a, like a renaissance of patriarchal. Uh, system and a lot of murderies, a lot of violence and hierarchy against women. So it's it's really um, very um, sad and it in uh, and we have a lot very high inequality. And I am a representative of Kirk Sots organization. It's like Marxist organization. And we have one like direction as a fem sots, fe feministic uh, socialism, uh, fem sots like uh, Marxist feminists. And uh, we try now to work with uh, a labor unions that really it's like very uh, few steps toward uh, because we just recently burn, uh, was born, but. Anyway, it's um, very important to for us to work with the uh, labor unions and directly with the women uh, and uh, who work in the production, who has really like violation of their rights. And also we work with the agenda, like we try to represent uh, the uh, Marxist feminism uh, as a movement and to show that there is no way to emancipate women uh, without economical emancipation and uh, without like transforming capitalism into more uh, equal society, more fair society. And uh, finishing uh, that, I want to say that in the and according to the last situation that we saw now ongoing uh, that actually it's uh, obvious that we have such kind of situation as like this imperial war because we really pay our budgets to nuclear weapons we pay our um, taxes and money and resources for something that really go for the destroyed and and if you made a weapon so it will just will be used so that's why uh it's not only the problem of like current situation it's the whole system in the on the global level built that to have all these uh, massacres that is going on now uh, so yes, I, I really was happy to meet you all and yeah, we also making some notes who are from here and trying to add you in social networks and I also will put here our social um, like Instagram social nets and yeah, so we will stay in touch and thank you all for organizing this conference. Yeah. Uh, peace from Kyrgyzstan. Thank you. Muchas gracias, compañera Vermet. Un gusto para Thank you so much, Vermet. It is such a pleasure for us to be able to listen to you in this um, conference. So let's 
hear our last comrade, our comrade Chaya. We all know her, or many of us know her. Chaya is part of the Sahara Wind Youth. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, or good morning and good night to all of you. Um, greetings, friends. I'm so happy to be here. I'm also always happy to speak about the women issues, and I always say that the women's uh, struggle is that of the women's um, wellness. In our fight, uh, the one, the fight of one woman is the fight of all women. My heart is with Ukrainian people. I know what a war is like. I know how much you suffer. My heart is with you. Um, I won't start speaking about the process of the refugee camps of Sahrawi women, how much we suffer, the, the illnesses, bombings. I will talk about current uh, situations. I won't speak about the war that's currently happening here that has taken the lives of many young people. Because as we are busy, we are colonized and we women cannot enjoy our freedom. So I will talk about the situation of current women in occupied zones, in occupied areas, or like, for example, like in Marrakech, Morocco, uh, which has the administrative forces, women do not feel safe, women die, and there are no research uh, to see the motive of the death, uh, who caused it, and when it, when a person from uh, Morocco dies in hands of a Saharawian person, it is completely different. In occup occupied areas, there are situations. Uh, there was one of our comrades who was uh, imprisoned in her house. He was uh, raped. He was isolated. And he kept on resisting. Sultana is only one example of many women who have suffered in prison in which they, there are group rapes of Morocco law enforcement um, people. There are images, there are videos, there are documents which show this, which are evidence and proof of it. There is evidence that there's only silence because it is a country that's exploited by the European Union. And give me a moment, please. I'm so sorry, comrade. As I was saying, it is a country that is being exploited. So as I have always said, in regards of economic uh, rights, those are above human rights. So the situation of the Saharawan women is critical in camp. We, we women do, do not uh, suffer the same. In the occupied areas, women are facing a worse situation. There is violence that is often not allowed. Uh, our struggle is not a struggle for jobs, uh, because, not because it's not necessary, but because we have to fight for basic rights like freedom. We feel safe and strong in camps but we are scared and we don't feel good so knowing that there are comrades suffering in the occupied areas. Those are hitting images. That's where we have to unite. We have to speak about these women. The fight, the women's fight, it's not one women's fight, it's for all of us women. Even though I am not lesbian, or even though I, I don't take part in the LGBT community, or even though I am not a worker, I do share those fights, the struggles with the LGBT community, with the working uh, women um, struggles. 
And I also want to take part in the struggles of those women who are in the occupied areas. I receive assistance and I want to assist them also. Our comrades in the occupied areas are suffering that amount of violence that nowadays, I, I really don't know what to say. I have no words for that. Um, they are suffering, I am suffering, and I can imagine that all human women are also suffering, not only for Sultana, but also for all the women in the world who suffer the same thing. So that I don't want to take too long, but I would like to welcome Kenyan comrades. In, in Africa, we know that uh, women also need a lot of support. And that's why we are also in Africa and all continents and greetings to Ukraine comrades. We share the same pain, the pain of war, of blood, and that's just an obstacle. We have to unite, we have to be together, and we have to overcome it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chaya. As I just said, Chaya Hamed of the Saharawi Youth and the ISL. Thank you so much for your words. That was our last comrade from the list in this International Conference for Socialist Women. As you may know, we have taken too long, a little, a few more minutes than we have agreed. So I would like to make a closing greeting and um, now Daria is going to speak so that we can um, begin the closing of this international encounter. Comrades, thank you for all to these great contributions. All these talks, when combined, clearly tells about how the system is rotten. And Trotsky has a very good sentence. In order to change the conditions of life, we must learn to see them through the eyes of women. And through the eyes of women, it is poverty, it is violence, it is inequality, even in our world, no proper food, no shelter, no education, etc., etc. Even the, especially in the underdeveloped part of the world, being women is means uh, living under terrible conditions. So we have to change the system as the capitalism has no capacity to even sustain our basic daily life issues. And we have to educate the masses how to overthrow this brutal world system and how to uh, prevail the permanent revolution all over the world. And through the permanent revolutionary program, emancipation of women and of all gender, all the uh, diversities and LGBT people will only be, uh, only this way will be emancipated. Thank you comrades, more power to you all in all over the world. We will be keep fighting together. Muchas gracias, Daria. Thank you so much, Daria. Okay, comrades, all of you who have participated in this international conference of socialist women headed to the 8th of March, I wanted to thank all of you, all comrades who spoke, all comrades who watched um, this event. It is really important to have this uh, voice diversity, um, each story, each country situation, the need of coordination. We need to keep on fighting for our rights. Let's return to this idea that there are no frontiers, there is no division, there is no language that can divide us. We have to keep on fighting jointly. We have great challenges to assume. And fundamentally, we have to understand, as we said in our first Congress of the International Socialist League, is that we have to boldly intervene in the women's movement, in the LGBT 
movement without being sectarian, understanding that there are different currents, that we, uh, that there are fully classist movements, but with our own um, ideas of revolutionary socialism, there is a space for us, there is opportunities for us to grow. In this um, capitalist crisis, we have to go forward and say that there is another way out. And our way out is a socialist society. And that's the, those are the ideas with which uh, many of our comrades were able to conquest um, our rights. Uh, those victories of the Bolshevik revolution were liquidated by Stalinism. We have to say that. But we are struggling and we are fighting to be acknowledged as women, as LGBT um, community. And it is through revolutionary parties. That's the way we are going to take power out of businessmen, out of these governments. They benefit from our exploitation. They benefit from our oppression. The way is to keep on waving that flag of socialist and revolutionary women. We are the ones who need to fight until the end. And today we'll end this meeting being stronger, with much more strength in every continent, in every country jointly. Of course, the 8th of March, we'll, we will be together in the streets and we will keep on fighting for all of, all of our rights. We have to unite the class struggle with our gender rights and to get through this fight with a revolutionary and socialist program in order, in order to get these transitional programs to be implemented in order to change this system, father of all violence, to create an equal, just society. For us, a socialist society. So I would like to thank you all to be here for being here and uh, I would like to ask for a favor right now. I would like to ask all comrades who have been panelists to turn on their cameras so that we can take a screenshot to show that we have no frontiers and that we will keep on fighting together. There it is. Turning on the cameras. Hi, Sofia. Thank you. Thank you for participating. Thank you for being here. We already took this. We are taking the screenshot. Comrades, thank you all. Thank you for being here and let's keep on fighting for that society that we dream of. Thank you so much.